for some, that grief, grief is felt deeply when that pet dies, and it may be hard to recover. Joining me today from the Alcohol, Drug, and Mental Health Board of Franklin County, or the Adam H. Board, Medical Director, Dr. Chris Cavell. Thank you, doctor, for being here. And Bobby, let's see, Bobby Mon Montaneri. Right. I got that right, Bobby. Thank you so much for being here. And your pet, Sarah. Right. Because you recently lost another pet, and so this is another dog that you've taken. Who, who, what was the name of the dog you lost? Ginger. And how long ago? Uh, almost two years. How did that, obviously these are all relics, I'm going to call them remembrances of Ginger, and that obviously affected you deeply. Very much so. What Here. did you go through when it happened? Well, she was very much like, I guess people would describe as their child. And it was my first dog, and um, at the time my mom was very, very ill with lung cancer. And so she would go to hospice with me. She'd go to work at Universal Gymnast with me. She went everywhere with me. And in fact, that was one of the reasons why it was so difficult was because the dog was with you a lot. And some of your gymnasts also felt that same feeling right. for right. the pet. Definitely. Um, the level six team, uh, one particular girl, Kelly Jones, she um, got a bench and put um, a plaque on it in memory of Ginger. And now it is in my, my gym. And they, the team gave that to me so that, because Ginger was such a part of our gym. Well, Doctor, I'm sure that everyone reacts differently to the loss of a pet. What is, what's the range? A really big range. I mean, there's a big range about how people react to loss in general. And then I think you have superimposed on that the uh, society's views of the whole issue about losing uh, pets. Is it how should people react? And I think we feel a lot of pressure as, as individuals um, to uh, not be inappropriate with our, our grieving process. Well, what about people that say, you know what, it was a dog, you should get over it. And, and, right. and I'm sure you probably had that same experience, Bobby, too. With I don't people. think anybody said that to me. <laughs> no, they, they knew. <laughs> but you know, it's possible people who don't have pets yeah. who don't really understand that um, attachment that you get. Mm -hmm. It can really be underestimated. And, uh, uh, and people get uncomfortable with, with other people grieving to begin with. You right. want to support them, but you don't know how to do it. And, and uh, you just kind of hope they get over it really fast. I and to think. talk about it too, right? Let them remember their pet. That's a really helpful thing to do rather than to avoid the subject. Well, Bobby, you have another dog now, Sarah. And now there are some people that they say, you shouldn't get another dog right away. You shouldn't try to replace Ginger. What was And what was Definitely. your reaction to that? Um, I felt that those people didn't understand where I was with things mm -hmm. and that um, kind of ignored those kind of people. I went to the people that really understood me and my relationship. And um, my team program director, Brett, got on the internet and um, looked up Golden Endings. We had heard about this place that um, have abandoned and abused dogs. Oh, okay. And we were only going to go look. But <laughs> you knew that was a big mistake. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the next oh thing I said, God. that one, and yeah. went home. Mm -hmm. And she's such a good dog. Oh, oh my God. 